man as respected and revered as Sir Henry Cecil describes him as, not only the best horse I have trained, the best horse I have seen, you know you're in the midst of something extraordinary, something remarkable, something beyond the wildest of dreams. Frankl is the horse who has transformed those dreams into glorious reality. Yet to taste defeat in nine public outings, he is fast becoming the stuff of legend. In Sir Henry Cecil, he is blessed with a trainer of infinite wisdom, unwavering patience and unparalleled experience, a multiple champion, a genius who has coached a more top class horses through his 42 years at Warren Place Newmarket than you could shake a stick at. Think of horses like Slip Anchor, Reference Point and Commander in Chief, Oh So Sharp, Bosra Sham and One in a Million, and you think of Sir Henry Cecil. Frankel though, was something else, right from the start. Fold on February the 11th, 2008, a son of Galileo, out of kind, and bred by Judmont Farms, he was to provide Prince Khaled Abdullah, owner of such horses in the past as Dancing Brave and Zaphonic, Known Fact and Dane Hill, Rainbow Quest and Oasis Dream, with the most thrilling period of his 40 plus years in racing. The first time he stepped on the race course at Newmarket in August 2010, Frankel's star quality shone through. Who could have reckoned that when he won that first race, that chasing Frankel home was nothing less than Nathaniel, likewise making his debut and a horse destined within 12 months to beat a Derby hero workforce in the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Diamond Stakes. Frankel's juvenile career in the super confident hands of Tom Queeley, the only jockey to have ridden him in public, was truly spectacular. He went on to land the conditions race at Doncaster by 13 lengths, the Group 2 Royal Lodge Stakes at Ascot by 10 lengths, and most prestigiously, and importantly of all, the Group 1 Dubai Dewhurst Stakes at Newmarket. Roderick O'Connor, the runner-up, went on to win the Irish 2000 Guineas, while the unplaced dream ahead had won two Group 1s before the Dewhurst and rattled up three more in his second season. The scene then was set for Frankel to prove himself. Opinion, it seemed, was divided. Plenty thought he was the real thing, a horse capable of taking all before him as a three-year-old. Others cast doubts, wondering whether he was simply a precocious, deeply mature juvenile and with concerns that his habitual headstrong tendencies may count against him and prevent him from fulfilling his enormous potential in his second season. Newbury's Toadsport.com Greenham Stakes was his starting point. The hype was colossal. Just a fortnight before his reappearance, it was reported on the front page of the Racing Post that not only had he beaten his lead horse by 20 lengths over seven furlongs on the Alba Hathry poly track, he had also outrun a train, the 713 passenger service to Cambridge. Come Newbury, where he was sent off the one to four favorite he also outran his five Greenham rivals, which included his stablemate picture editor, who was scarcely quick enough to lead him for four of the seven furlongs. And they're off racing for the totesport.com Greenham Stakes. And Frankham just content to get a bit of cover in the early stages. Tom Queeley as his stable companion, picture editor, heads on into the lead, followed by Acceleration and then Vanguard Dream. Frankel taking a bit of a hold now, and then Shropshire, followed by Strong Suit held up at the back of the field. And the two Cecil runners, the two Henry Cecil train runners, picture editor and Frankel are first and second, followed by Acceleration, then Shropshire in the blue jacket, in the white jacket is Vanguard Dream, and lastly in red and green, is strong suit. So picture editor is leading the field down towards the halfway stage. Picture editor shadowed in second by Frankel. Then in third is Acceleration, followed by Shropshire. Strong suit getting a bit closer towards the back with Vanguard Dream. Frankel right on turns with picture editor. Acceleration now kicking on on the near side as they race down to the final quarter mile. Acceleration busted along. Frankel is just being woken.
broken up now. Just with head slightly on one side there. Shropshire and Strong Suit back in fourth place. Frankel now takes over from Acceleration as they race towards the final furlong. Frankel begins to extend about a length and a half. Big run from Acceleration in second place. But Tom Queeley hasn't had to get serious at all with Frankel. And inside the final half, he's stretching away. And Frankel maintains his unbeaten record. And that was pretty impressive. Four lengths was the winning margin over Acceleration with a further sixth back to Shropshire Lad in third. And no sooner had Queeley pulled him up than quotes of four to nine were proffered for the Kipco 2000 guineas a fortnight down the line. The vibes from Warren Place in the interim were positive. Frankel, as was expected, had benefited from his Newbury outing. Expectation and anticipation was huge come Guineas Day. Would he settle? How would he be ridden? Would he deliver? And if he did deliver, would he be in the style of a champion? Frankel, the one to two favourite, did not disappoint. Indeed, he produced a performance of breathtaking magnitude, surely one of the most incredible in racing history. He didn't just win, he totally slaughtered his 12 rivals with an awesome display of power and brilliance from start to finish, and which, quite simply, had to be seen to be believed. They're loaded, they're ready. They're off, they're racing then, and Dubawi Gold is slowly away from the gates for this. Kipco 2000 Guineas, Frankel got out well. Roderick O'Connor, and towards the near side, rerouted are with Frankel, who's gone on. Frankel leads to rerouted in second place. Native Khan, Casamento, the blue jacket, nose banded, is going to chase through. Re Roderick O'Connor just in behind. Native Khan taking a prominent position. Jubawi Gold, happy today, have dropped out towards the rear of the field. But Frankel is already four lengths clear. He's heading down now towards the last half mile. And it's Frankel and Tom Queeley by five or six lengths to Casamento in second place. And then rerouted in third. Roderick O'Connor and Slim Shady and Native Khan just in behind those. Zamid comes next and then comes Brooks. Jubalbi Gold is still at the back of the field, but at halfway, Frankel is almost 10 lengths clear. They're heading then down towards the bushes now. Frankel continues to be in a massive lead to Casamento in second place and then rerouted behind. That is par four. Jubalbi Gold coming from the back of the field, but at the bushes, Frankel is 15 lengths clear. Frankel is heading down the water last quarter mile. He's making every yard of the running here. Jubalbi Gold and Native Khan have moved into second and third place. Parfog is behind in third place, into the dip. Frankel continues to be in front. He's six or seven lengths clear to Jubalbi Gold is coming to second. Native Khan in third position, inside the last furlong. A horse who is pure class. Frankel has destroyed them from halfway. An amazing performance as Frankel heads towards the line to make every single yard in the Guinness and win it well. Jubalbi Gold in second, Native Khan in third. And to, to win a classic is special and but to win it in a manner like that. But I'm, I'm glad for the horse that he did it like that because the media were building him up to be something super equine. And, he know, is something super he equine. He is, yeah, yeah, and they were right. And, but I'm glad that, you know, I suppose that for the media it would have been an anti-climax if he were to win by a length. But, you know, he, he did it very well and he loves galloping. He's able to gallop and, and that's what I let him do. And you just thought, I guess, let this horse use his natural enthusiasm rather than trying to rein it in. Yeah, I, I said to Henry after the um, the green, you know, I know the pacemaker wasn't quick enough to lead us along, but if, if, if I was to like jump, keep it simple, make the running, he'd have won by probably two or three extra lengths. So, what's the point in pulling around? And I might have caught a lot of him on, on, the, on the hop, you know, because we're probably expecting me to get cover, relax, all the rest, you know, you know, but he was. It's a fraction. Now looking at the replay, it looked like I wasn't hanging around. But on him, you just—I know the horse, and you can only work with what you have underneath you. And he just feels like he's doing a lot steadier than he actually is. And I spoke to, to Shane that rides him every day this morning, and you know he said he's—you he, know—he's improved a fair bit because I haven't really been riding him. I haven't ridden him. I haven't sat in him since Newbury. I mean, Shane does—he he does a mighty job with him. And, you know, he, he and he conf, you know, I had a lot of confidence in the horse, and, and he just bunked, bunked that up a bit, you know. Did you have any idea how far clear you were I at halfway? I, I had a peep, yeah. And I, Did you frighten yourself when you had that peep? No, but I was delighted then because you've, you've got leeway. You can have a breather. You can 
you, you can do things whereas if they're let down they're going to come to your guard to make you race whenever they want you to race but I was in full control of what I wanted to do and you know he, as I said he loves galloping and, and he, he certainly did that and you know he, he put the rest of them to, to shame really when you see an exhibition of that kind of explosive galloping speed the thoughts of a mile and a half round Epsom are about as distant as you could possibly imagine but it's often been considered that that would be the route he would take. What's in your mind as regards that now? He showed a lot of speed today. I mean, that was the one thing we'd have learned from today is, you know, he's able to motor, you know. But I suppose the last furlong or so, he was just idle and he, he needed help, but there's nothing in the race to help him or hinder him or do anything to him. You didn't feel that he was tying up underneath you in that last furlong? No, just idling, and you know, but... You know, like he won by six six lengths. You know, what's the record? Nine. It's pretty special. It's, it's pretty special, yeah. yeah he's, I've never sat in anything like him, and it's kind of it's great to sit on something so great so early in my career. But you know, he's unbelievable, yeah. His winning margin over the Barwi Gold was six lengths, the second biggest winning margin of victory in the 2000 Guineas history and bettered only by Tudor Minstrel, an eight lengths winner that was back in 1947. The racing world was in complete awe of Frankel. He was now six from six. What could possibly beat him? And where would he go next in a bid to make it a magnificent seven straight wins? Sir Henry Cecil had long since voiced concerns about Frankel staying the mile and a half of the Derby. York's Dante Stakes, a traditional stepping stone to Epsom, was consequently ruled out, and Frankel was aimed at Royal Ascot. The St. James Palace Stakes, on the opening day of the meeting, drew a field of nine runners. Dabawi Gold, an unlucky loser of the Irish 2,000 guineas, since chasing home Frankel at Newmarket, was back for more. So too was Green and runner-up at Celebration, who had gone on to easily land at the German 2000 guineas. Dream Ahead, whose only previous defeat had come when fifth in the Dewhurst was set to make his eagerly awaited seasonal bow, while Aidan O'Brien relied solely on triple winner Zoffany. Sent off the 100 to 30 on favorite, Frankel was the horse everyone had come to see. The packed crowds craned their necks to get a look at this extraordinary horse. Defeat was unimaginable. It was, however, nail-biting stuff. Rerouted, also carrying the Khalid Abdullah colours, had never got chance to see the front when Frankel went from pillar to post in the 2000 guineas. But this time, under Michael Hills, he led the field at a ferocious pace from the outset and quickly established a clear lead. Queely, having settled Frankel in fourth, moved him closer after three furlongs, and then closer still. He soon challenged Reroot. He'd struck the front fully three furlongs out, and quickly was all of six lengths clear of his rivals. Had he gone too soon? Could he last home? Everyone held their breath. Inside the final furlong, Frankel was fast coming back to his pursuers. His long raking stride was shortening. Queely, adamant afterwards, that his superstar mount was idling, not tiring, was urging him forward. And Zoffany under Ryan Moore was making ground hand over fist. It was nail-biting stuff, but the post arrived in time for Frankel, who had three parts of a length to spare over Zoffany, with acceleration a further length and a half back in third. Relief was the principal emotion, relief that Frankel remained unbeaten and lived to fight another day. That day was to come at glorious Goodwood and a new challenge for Frankel to conquer. In the Kipco Sussex Stakes, he would not only be taking on older horses for the first time, he would be taking on the best older horse in the land, the brilliant Canford Cliffs, trained by Richard Hannan. The showdown between the pair, the clash of two giants, was a massive talking point. It was a not to be missed race. The unbeaten three-year-old Frankel, seven from seven, taking on the year-older Canford Cliffs, winner of his previous five starts, and with a career record of seven from 10, including five group ones. Come the day, come the hour, and in a four-strong field, Frankel started at eight to 13. 
and Canford Cliffs at 7-4 in the duel on the downs. Tactics were going to be key. Frankel had proved himself fairly versatile. He'd done it from the front and from behind. Canford Cliffs was an habitual stalker who liked to be played late. It was a race to save her. And they're off and racing. And from the stalls, Frankel bounds out enthusiastically. And as predicted, no one wants to accommodate him in giving him a lead. And Frankel and Canford Cliffs, the big two, are cutting out the early running. But Frankel, despite leading, is racing in hand and pretty settled early on. Canford Cliffs quickly drops onto his rival's tail. Anxious not to give away any track position as they climb steadily uphill. Ratch the man in third and Rio de la Plata restrained. So Frankel now just striding on slightly leads by about a two to three lengths from Canford Cliffs as they climb uphill. In third is Rio de la Plata and Ratch the man is at the rear of the field. So Frankel, slender tight restraint, but very much Tom Quealy in command of things at the moment with Canford Cliffs just allowing the leader no more than two lengths start. Tom takes a quick look and he'll see that Canford Cliffs is right on his tail. Rio de la Plata in third and Raj Zaman in fourth. So Frankel at the halfway stage in the Kipco Sussex Stakes on the descent, still leading by a length and a half. Tom Queeley still sitting quietly. Canford Cliffs stalking his rival, then Rio de la Plata and Raj Zaman. And Frankel is still traveling comfortably and is yet to be asked on the front end. Canford Cliffs shadowing his rival, trying to decide when, if he can exert any pressure and Frankel still travels strongly. Canford Cliffs the orange colours and now Frankel for the first time is shaken up. Canford Cliffs in second place over a far long out. Frankel's acceleration is instant. Can Canford Cliffs who's drifting left reel in his rival? No! A decisive no! Frankel unbeaten utilises that turn of foot to devastating effect and wins the kick close Sussex Stakes. What a brilliant horse! Frankel saw off Canford Cliffs in the twinkling of an eye. Five lengths was the winning margin, even allowing for the suggestion that Canford Cliffs might not have been at his best on the day. It was another awesome performance. The best horse I've ever seen, claimed Sir Henry Cecil. Praise comes no higher than that. He's the best horse I've ever seen. I think you compare Blushing Groom at his best and Shergar. Uh, I don't think I've seen, in my opinion, everybody's got a different opinion, a better horse. You know, he, he's unbelievable. Um, we don't know going back to the days before you were born in, in the days of matches and things like that and Tudor Minstrel, I don't know. But, but I would think he's probably the best horse you, you've ever seen. I'm sure he is. I'm yeah. sure he is. And when did he? When did you first have that thought about Well, you, you know, you get a feeling as things go along, don't you? But he did everything right today. He was very relaxed and everything. He had to make his own running, which I didn't want to do, but we, we knew we had to have you know, made things for him to relax. Yeah? And, uh, but when he quickens, he quickens fast. Yeah? And it's the way that you could see one opponent after the other seeming to feel the screw yeah. being turned, and he didn't seem to be sending no, ahead. And he just really wants to do it. When he just asked him, he, all he wants is please. You know? I mean, he is a brilliant horse, no doubt about it. Um, and I've got to thank you know, the Prince and all those involved at Warren Place and Judmont Farms and the jockey and also the bullet train the lead horse I mean uh, it's three parts brother has led him all all through the year I mean, you've got to be pretty good to lead a horse like that you know? so I, I'm, I'm relaxed now uh, it was like a dentist appointment they haven't, ta they haven't taken all my teeth out and I'm still here one more race was written into Frankel's 2011 campaign fittingly it was to be on the inaugural Kipco British Champions Day at Ascot on October 15th. Six months on from the Greenham and the horse that his Frankel had grown into a living legend. The Queen Elizabeth II stakes was an eight runner affair, but eyes were on only one, Frankel, the four to 11 favorite. While from France came Immortal Verse, winner of the Coronation stakes and uh, the Prix Jacques de Marois, defeating the mighty Goldie Cover. Acceleration, who had won the Prix de Moulin since his last beating by the Wonder Horse was back again for another crack, as was De Bawi Gold. The opposition mattered not a jot. Frankel was again in a league of his own. And they're often racing for the QE2 and Bullet Train is fast out as Frankel is restrained 
on jumping and bullet train last off down the middle of the race course leading from Dick Turpin and Dubawi Gold who are the first ones to give chase Dick Turpin markedly so uh, Frankel just a little keen head to one side racing on the outside of this stage of acceleration behind these the yellow jacket of side glance who's also pretty free immortal verse under restraint in company with poet's voice so making their way down towards the six furlong point and bullet train is clear by about four to five lengths over dick turpin in second dubawi gold is in third x celebration with frankel in about fourth or fifth place at the moment uh, behind these the blue jacket of poet's voice and then we have the keen side glance and immortal verse is held up at the rear of the field so bullet train out in front still with a clear advantage and now frankel and the group at the center is sent off pursuit of the pacemaker dick turpin and dubawi gold deciding where they're going to go dick turpin heading towards the stand side uh, x celebration with poet's voice immortal verse and side glance bullet train the pacemaker still has a lead of about five to six lengths frankel is towing up the main group with acceleration poets voice immortal verse white and green beginning to steal closer two furlongs out the moment of truth as frankel moves alongside bullet train immortal verse in danger of running up the back of the pacemaker frankel is asked to stretch has found two to three lengths from acceleration and immortal verse frankel being held together acceleration two lengths down frankel now in full cry acceleration and immortal verse two quality horses are made to look mere mortals as frankel remains unbeaten and wins the QE2. He settled very well and he's grown up. Um, so he sort of lost his cover early on, but he was still grown enough to, to deal with that and, and realised that he didn't have to, to go tearing off or anything like that. So, and he waited till I gave him the office to go and I'm sure everybody saw what happened after that. Were you able to enjoy that? Because in the build-up and everything, so much expectation. I always enjoy winners like that. I always enjoy winners. Any, any sort of winner, but a race like this and a horse like this and you know it's it's a credit to Quipco and, and the sponsors you know it's, it's what a hell of a day and I'm glad it's, it's worked out for everyone. Yeah, the early stages of the race I mean did he all go to plan did he feel it was running the way he wanted? Yeah, yeah. Ian went good Ian did a good job and it worked out. The trainer says he'll be even better next year. Probably will be. Heaven help the rest then. Yeah. No, Could you ever see him being beaten then? There's a lot to look forward to and you know it doesn't look like he's going to be beaten. You know, who knows what happens next to you? You've got to get through the winter. We're enjoying today, I'm enjoying today, but if, if any trainer is going to get him into next spring, it's Sir Henry. Is there ever going to be a racehorse like this for you ever to ride again? This is a once-in-a-lifetime horse, is it? I don't think I'll be on a horse like this again. No. I don't think so. hope I am, but... <laughs> well done. Shot. Well done. Thanks. Four from four as a juvenile, five from five as a three-year-old, nine from nine in all. Sheer brilliance in a racehorse comes round only rarely. Frankl is a one-off, a freak, a monster, a racing machine whose remarkable talents are already the stuff of legend. To see him in action is a wondrous thing, a treat to savour, and the best news of all is that he remains in training in 2012. The plan at some stage, probably for the eclipse, is to step him up to a mile and a quarter. It's a mouth-watering prospect. How much more can he achieve? How far can his star climb? Will he ever be beaten? Enjoy him, embrace him. You're unlikely ever to see his like again. The brilliant Frankel is the horse of the century.